If your e-commerce store is using Shopify, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, or really any other e-commerce platform online, if you switch to a headless architecture, you will make more money. Headless e-commerce is an e-commerce architecture that decouples the front end and back end components of an online shopping experience. The presentation layer, the head or just your front end, is separated from the underlying e-commerce functionality, such as product management, inventory control and payment processing. You're currently using a monolithic infrastructure. If you're not, as you can see to the right of me on screen right now, if we move you over to a headless architecture, what we'll teach you how to do on this channel, you will make a lot more money. Firstly, increased speed equals more conversions. Speed is your biggest lever you can use to increase your conversions in 2023. People nowadays have such a low attention span that for every second of load time, your conversion rate's gonna drop and your cart abandonment rate is gonna go up. It will also increase your search engine ranking if you switch to a headless architecture. Your web vitals are very important nowadays since about 2021 in Google's ranking algorithm. So if we can make it so that your web vitals are better, you're gonna rank higher. It's also a lot more scalable. If you have a lot of products, you're gonna to wanna to statically generate a lot of those pages to ensure great speed. And if you have thousands and thousands of products in say a Shopify store, it's gonna to start to get slower and your conversions are gonna drop. Plus, when implementing a headless architecture, you don't have to use any of Shopify's templates or WooCommerce's templates in order to create your store. You can create it right in HTML and CSS to ensure that it looks exactly how you want it and represents your brand properly. And lastly, you're gonna get a lot more security. The back end and the front end are separate. So it means that if somebody tries to attack your front end, it's a lot harder for them to mess up your back end logistics and payment processing. I've been talking about how speed is so important, and that's one of the biggest reasons you would move to a headless architecture. But I wanna take you through some reasons and some real life evidence that supports the power of speed online. Walmart, for example, found that for every second of load time that they managed to reduce their site, their conversion rate increased by 2%. For a huge company like Walmart, that's millions of dollars every year. Portent Analytics also found that if you can get your site's load time below 2.4 seconds, that the average conversion rate should hover around 1.9. And a lot of e-commerce stores, trust me, they're not doing a 1.9% conversion rate. There are a lot of frameworks you can use to build out your headless architecture. Some examples are Gatsby, Next.js, Nux.js, View Storefront, Angular, Remix, and there's many more. However, today I'm gonna to quickly walk you through how you can set it up with a Shopify store and Next.js 13. Let's jump over to the code and I'll show you how it's done. If you just wanna know what headless commerce is and the benefits that come with it, this is kind of where the video ends for you. However, if you wanna learn how to implement it with Next.js and Shopify, keep watching because that's what I'm about to show you. So first things first, you're gonna to need to have a Shopify store or create one. Unfortunately, you can't use their free tier if you're just trying to put this together as an example. You have to, unfortunately, get the basic plan. However, it's only a dollar a month for the first three months. So if you wanna try it out, just get it for one month and cancel it, it's only $1. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create some products within it. So I just created two, just a black t-shirt and jeans, pretty, pretty straightforward. And yeah, it doesn't really matter any of the details of it, whether you're tracking inventory or any of that. Then you're gonna to wanna to go up here and you're gonna to wanna to just type in headless and you'll see I already have this installed. If not, you're gonna to wanna to just go to the Shopify app store and install this. It won't let you install that if you're on the free tier. Okay, perfect. So once we have that, you're gonna to wanna to go over to this GitHub repository. I've already cloned it, but this is the, it's from Vercel himself and it's just called Commerce and it's a Next 13 application that it's, it's a template that allows you to get up and running really quickly 
and just imp import the details so then you just have to worry about aesthetic stuff it'll handle all the fetching all the product pages for you it's really fantastic so once you have this repo cloned as i have it cloned right here um you're gonna want to go to your shopify store let's close this and this Um, you're gonna want to go to your Shopify store. Sorry about that. And you're gonna want to set up the storefront API, as you can see right here. So then you're gonna get a public access token and a private access token. So I'm going to copy both of these and put these into this environment.example file. So this is my public. My private goes right here. And then you're just gonna wanna grab your store's um, domain. So you can just go right here, and I'm just gonna copy this, and delete this, and then I'm just gonna do HTTPS. Add that in, as this is my Shopify store's domain. If we copy this, for example, and put this in a browser, you will see the basic store that uh, is just generated by default from Shopify. Yours will look exactly the same if you just start. I haven't picked a template. I haven't done any of that. Not like it matters anyways, but we can now go here and okay, so we have all our details in. Now what we need to do is we're gonna change this environment variable file just to environment.local just because example doesn't mean anything local, just means that it won't be pushed to your GitHub repo. And then lastly, I'm just gonna do npm install. So we'll get us all the packages that we need that this template relies on in the package JSON file. And that will also give us our package lock JSON file. So once this is done, Perfect, okay, now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna do npm run build. I'm gonna just do build just because it's so much faster than using development mode. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna do npm run start to start that development server. So now I'll open this link in the browser. So you're gonna see this. This is just the basic template from Vercel. And in products, I'm just gonna type in black and perfect. Now you'll see that we have, this is all working. We can click this, you can see it. Black t-shirt to keep you looking fresh. I'll add it to cart. It'll then be added to cart and you can proceed to checkout and then that will redirect you to the Shopify payment processor as seen here. So yeah. Now let's go over how this all works. So this template from Vercel is incredibly in-depth and incredibly well-written. I could talk about this template for hours. However, as we know, most of the benefits of headless commerce comes from the speed. And how you're gonna get that speed is by statically generating your pages or caching them on the server and by having Next.js's client-side routing. So I'm right now in this product page right here so this handle variable is see what I have here this black T that's the handle so if you see this the handle is passed in as a parameter to this generate metadata function as we know generate metadata a new thing within Next.js 13 I have a whole series on Next.js 13 and the changes from Next 12 if you're new to Next 13 that's a good thing to check out I'll leave a link to it below but if we go to this get product uh, function, you'll see that it calls this Shopify fetch function and has some parameters. So let's go check it out. So here you can see that this is how, this is the function that's used to pull in the products to your website. And it takes in the um, fetch configuration um, or not all of them, but some of the uh, parameters for that. So where 
is the fetch? It's probably right in front of my face and I can't see it. Um, oh yeah, perfect, here. Okay, so fetch, right here, you can see that we cache it using this variable right here. And you can see it defaults to force cache, what means that all of the requests will be uh, cached on the server unless there's a dynamic function in the mix like cookies or something like that. So this means that these pa pages will be statically generated. Essentially, if you're coming from Next12, now it's a little bit more complex how to phrase that, but essentially just think static pages. It's not gonna be rendered on the server every time a request is made. So what this, this is the main thing that allows you to get that speed. And if you add that in with Next.js's client side routing, for example, if I click back here, you can see it's all super quick. Let's see, black T, do do, see how quick that is. And that's because it's statically generated. So that's really all the detail I'm going to go into in this one. In the next tutorial, if, if you guys want it, I'll make a whole nother series breaking down this template, how to implement it with Next.js, and then I'll probably also do it with BigCommerce as well, because that's something I'm used to doing. So yeah, that's all for now. If you like the content, please subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.